I want to encourage you to work along with me. I'm going to do some basic lower body exercises, and I'm going to start with activating the glutes. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to do something called frog pumps, and that is to activate your glutes. And by that, I mean, you're going to wake up those muscles so that when we do the other exercises that are going to work quads here, hamstrings under here, and then your glute muscles, and you actually have three major glute muscles. This kind of wakes the muscle up. And it's a good way to sort of warm up as well. Now, if it's hard for you, some of you have back problems and knee problems, don't do it if it's hard for you. Or you can do a very modified version. But what you do is you bring your feet together like this, and then you lean back on your shoulders. You kind of keep your elbows here, lift your shoulders off the floor, bring your feet in, and then bring your glutes up and squeeze. And I just got a little cramp in my hamstring. So if that happens to you, just stop for a minute, relax, take a deep breath and go back. And you wanna do like 10 or 15 of these. So four and squeeze at the top, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, squeeze, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, if that's hard on your neck, go ahead and put your head down and do the same thing. That won't be hard on your neck. It'll keep your spine in a neutral position. But I'm gonna put these around my ankle. And of course, I don't have a cable machine <laughs> in my kitchen. So one of the nice things I think about fitness is how you have to be creative. So I've got my weight bench and because it's pretty, you know, it's light enough, I can pick it up and move it around. So I put weights on the weight bench to keep it stationary. I have one on the seat and I have two anchoring it so when I do my kickbacks, it's not gonna like pull off the floor. Then I take one of my larger loop bands and this is um, a lavender one and the resistance on it is a really good, for me, for the um, kickback, it's a really good resistance. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it around the seat of the weight bench and anchor it that way. Oops, hold on, gotta do something else first. I'm gonna loop it into my ankle bracelet or ankle, I call it a bracelet, ankle strap like that. Okay, now I'm gonna put it around the weight bench. So it's really anchored. And because I've got these heavy weights on it, it's not gonna move. So what I wanna do, and sometimes what you can do is hold onto the weight bench because you're gonna need something to stabilize you. And then always remember, what's the, what's the mantra? Tight core, proud chest, right? So tight core, proud chest, and when you do this, you wanna just feel it in your glute. You know, you don't wanna feel it in your back. Keep your back neutral. So your back needs to be straight and your spine right into your head. So it's not like this. It's not like this, it's neutral, like a really nice flat line there. All right, now we're gonna go and squeeze when it goes up there. I'm gonna do 10 of these each side, three, Four, five, six, seven, I'm hitting the cabinet, eight, nine, ten. All right. So I'm going to go the other side and do ten. 
And if you're adding this to your workout, what you want to do is three sets of those, 10 or 12, three sets. And I'll undo it on this ankle strap and I'll just move it over. The other thing you could do is you could rest a little bit and do three sets on one leg and three sets on the other leg. You know, if it's a timing issue and you don't wanna bend over each time and switch it back and forth, which, you know, if you've got back problems or flexibility problems, it's probably best to leave it on one leg, do 10 or 12 reps, rest for a minute, do another 10 or 12 reps on the same leg, and then switch over to the other leg after you've done three sets, okay? So now it's on the other side. <clears throat> I'm going to move over a little bit this way so you guys can see a little better. All right. Proud chest, core tight. One. Oh, I can really feel this better. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, 10, let's do 12, 11, 12. And you know, when you keep a tight core, proud chest, your back is arched a little bit. And that really also activates the glutes and helps you get a better workout. So when you lift a heavy weight, you don't bend over and use your back that's really not good for your back. You move a heavy weight by squatting, picking it up and using your legs like that, not your back. So I'm gonna set it over here. All right, so the hip abduction is for the inner thighs and the outer thighs. And they have machines at the gym that emphasize one or the other. You guys have probably seen them, the ones that you spread out this way and the ones that you like pull in this way. So you can do it with booty bands. Put your, um, again, tight core, proud chest, and right above your, your knees. And we'll do 12 of these, three, four, and you should feel it right in your glutes, six, squeeze and hold for just a split second, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If you don't have the booty band, you can use it with this band. You just double it up and you do the same thing. Maybe get a little wider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. And whether or not you guys are following along, um, what I like this video to be is, is to show you the exercises and allow you to do them on your own. So actually what you would do is stop the video, do three sets of 12, start the video again. So this is just really to show you um, proper form and the different exercises that you can do at home. If you don't have a gym membership, you don't want a gym membership, you can get super fit at home. You don't have to belong to a gym, especially my beginners, really good to work out at home, get your confidence, feel good in your body. And because I know it's very intimidating to go to a gym. So there's kettlebells and dumbbells. And you've all probably seen a kettlebell. It has this kind of a handle and it's usually round. And what I've done is I have bought this handle on amazon.com 
that you can wrap around your dumbbell. So it gives you the kettlebell feeling and the kettlebell benefits, even though kettlebells tend to be a little narrower, but they're really good for doing um, thrusting exercises where you swing it between your legs and you push up. That's a really good lower body exercise. This is a little bit um, wide, but I'll try and do it. I'll sort of get my stance right. Again, tight core, proud chest, neutral spine. And you use your hips to really swing it up. This probably is a more advanced technique. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. That's how a kettlebell would work. So these are squats you can do using dumbbells. You don't need a Smith machine. You don't need like barbells with the plates on it. It's gonna give you the same benefit. It's gonna work the same muscles. And these are some of my absolute favorites because they really work the inner thigh, the outer thigh, your quads, and also your hamstrings and your glutes. So these are the biggest muscles in your body. So if you have a leg day, you want to make sure that you feed yourself properly with carbohydrate, protein, and fat before your workout and after your workout. And if it's a leg day, do not immediately do your cardio. Even if it's the low intensity steady state on a treadmill, you've already exhausted the glycogen in your legs, which are, again, are your biggest muscles. And then for you to get on the treadmill right after that, it's not good. I would not do cardio on a leg date unless you do the workout in the morning and then you do cardio at night that would be acceptable. You split it. But as you know, your pre-workout and post-workout meals need to have your largest amount of carb macros so you can feed your muscles. Don't work out on an empty stomach. You can do cardio on an empty stomach, but not weight training. Your muscles have no fuel. Your performance will be low. You'll be tired. Your muscles will not be growing. And if you're going to go to all the trouble to go to the gym and put in the time, give your muscles what they need before you get there. That's really important. All right, so goblet squats. I've got a 30 pounder here. Um, usually I do this at the gym. Sometimes I put a kettlebell around my waist to give me more weight to lift. And then I'll hold the the dumbbell and it's just basically going going up and down and I'll do it from the front and the side. So what you want to do is get your dumbbell on the side and a lot of times people will put the dumbbell on a bench so they don't have to get down so low to pick it up. But again, you want to use your legs. You don't want to like lift the dumbbell with your back. You get into a squat position and you lift it with your legs. I'm gonna put on the counter here because I wanna get my hands underneath and hold it up like this. So this is a goblet squat. You wanna get your feet in a comfortable stance, wider than your hips, wider than your shoulders. And as you go down, you'll say, you'll realize, oh, maybe they need to be wider but it gives you that stability and that balance. So we'll do 12 of these. Go all the way down as far as you can. And then when you come up, squeeze your glutes. Two. Three, really try and use your muscles. Feel your glutes as you rise and also your hamstrings. Breathe out, coming up. And I'll show you from the side. Right, proud chest, tight core. Squeeze those glutes. 
Your feet should be pointing slightly out and you should get down as low as you can. Squeezing at the top. Going down slow can also give you a little bit more, you know, muscle activation, okay? So that's the goblet squat. And I would do three sets of 12 of those. Start with a light weight. And just if you can't go down very far, that's okay. You might even want to do it with your body weight, right? So hold on to a chair, feel the activating of those muscles. Not everybody's gonna be able to go all the way down like that. Don't try if you can't. And also if anything hurts, stop. So if you have knee problems, you probably wanna just do body weight and not full range of motion. Just get used to it. Get used to keeping your core tight and your chest proud and just work on the movement. And then as you get more confident, then you can add the dumbbells. So the other one is kind of a Romanian deadlift. And what a deadlift does is you keep your legs pretty straight, like knees back, not necessarily locked, but locked is okay. And when you bend over, what it does is it pulls and stretches the hamstrings. And then when you come up and they um, contract, you get a really good pump in that part of your body. And the hamstrings, you know, y'all know how sexy thighs can be, right? <laughs> And this will really work your thighs, your quads, and your back. So it's not just your quad muscles, it's your hamstrings. And they call this the posterior chain. It's a whole chain of muscles that go up into your glutes, all the way from your calves. Really beautifully designed. Our bodies are so beautifully designed. So you could either use um, two dumbbells, two dumbbells here. So you want to stand up straight, tight core, proud chest, and hinge at the hips, hinge. You don't bend your knees, you hinge, keep your legs straight, keep those dumbbells right next to your legs, and then come up, squeeze. The important thing is you keep it very close to your legs and keep your legs straight and you will feel that stretch in your hamstrings. The more you have a proud chest and a tight core, the more you'll rely on your hamstrings. It's really interesting. So as I sort of arch, keeping my chest proud, I can really feel the hamstrings getting stretched. So you would do three sets <clears throat> of 12 reps like that. That's the one. Stiff leg, RDL, or Romanian deadlift. And this is really how we experience fat loss is through fueling the muscles, doing resistance training, doing some cardio to keep your cardiovascular and conditioning up to par. But everything together, eating the right foods at the right time for the right reason, you can't help but transform. We're so used to 1200 calories and two hours of cardio. And that just, it's just so bad for our bodies. It's not the way bodies were designed to be run efficiently. And that's why there's so many issues with once we hit menopause, there's so many issues with belly fat and no energy and can't lose the weight. This is called the fire hydrant. And so you take the booty band and you put it around your thighs. And this is actually um, a heavy, they come in easy, medium, and hard. This one says it's hard, but it's really not hard. So it just depends on the brand that you use. But you get on all fours. And actually what I like to do is use a, something to cushion my knees. 
So you get on all fours, and this is called a quadruped position. You get in a quadruped position and make sure your shoulders to your um, wrists are perfectly vertical, right? So you don't wanna be out here and you don't wanna be back here. That'll hurt your joints. You wanna be completely vertical. And then also from thigh, and your thighs from your hips to your knees should be vertical. And you simply lift your leg like a dog at a fire right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Also in this position, you want tight core, proud chest, and that will give you a little bit of an arch in your back with the proud chest, which then puts all the emphasis on your lower body. So I'm going to do this one from the side so you guys can see. All right, so perfectly vertical arms and perfectly vertical knee to hip. And try and keep your arms straight. And mine were bending a little bit. You probably want to keep them straight as you can. So shoulders down to wrist should be very comfortable. Remember, not up here, not back here. And if you want, you can just sort of move your arms around and see how uncomfortable that is if it's in the wrong position. Because we're designed architecturally for everything to be at beautiful right angles. Okay, so here we go. Proud chest, core tight, other side. One, two, three, four, five. I remembered to keep my head in line with my spine. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay. That's the fire hydrant. So you would do, that would be one set, 12 on one side, 12 on the other side. Really, really good for your, for your glutes. And what I suggest is you do, depending on your, how you feel, four to six different exercises. Five is a good number. And if you could only do four, that's fantastic.